Hello everybody, welcome back to Band Trading Cards and today let's take a look at the Animal Kingdom trading card game that is fully funded on Kickstarter and there are a few more days to go to back it. Here it is. Hey there, my name is Michael Taylor, one of the co-creators of Animal Kingdom TCG, and I'd like to thank you for checking out our Kickstarter page. We at Monster Channel are a team of dedicated and lifelong TCG players who have combined our skills and knowledge to create a unique new card game that we're proud to show you. So you've just watched our trailer, and you may be wondering, what's Animal Kingdom all about? Animal Kingdom is a card game for two to four players that puts a new spin on traditional TCG gameplay. Instead of trying to destroy your opponents through force, you become the mayor of a fantasy city and must lead your city to prosperity by being the first mayor to gain 50 points of renown. The game's set in a world which melds traditional fantasy tropes with more modern elements, so your city could be filled with anything from bards and blacksmiths to skyscrapers and scientists. But what is a fantasy city without brave heroes filling its taverns? That's where our exciting quest system comes in. Rather than engaging in traditional combat, you'll send parties of adventurers out to protect the realm and complete epic quests. You might be asking yourself, so why did they decide to make Animal Kingdom? The answer is twofold. Firstly, we wanted to play a game that basically didn't exist yet. We'd spent the last two years developing and refining our game mechanics to create a unique experience that we couldn't find in any other games. Making Renown the key to victory makes sure everyone at the table stays fully engaged until the end. With every card doubling as a resource, even a few unlucky draws won't knock you out of the game early. Secondly, we had a story that we wanted to tell, and bring a unique world to life with it. What if humanity was wiped out and animal kind rose up in their place? Characters and locations in our game aren't just random elements, they're all part of Animal Kingdom's vibrant sci-fi fantasy setting, and the artwork on each and every card is a portal into that world, which is why we place such a huge emphasis on quality illustrations. And when we say we have a story, we mean it. There's already a prologue to our web novel available to read on Royal Road, with the full story set to properly begin this summer. Animal Kingdom is already being played at local game stores and conventions across the globe thanks to our tabletop simulator and printable decks, which are available to download at the link below. Players are calling it refreshing, unique, a great change of pace, and you can experience it yourself with help from our How to Play video, also linked below. Thank you so much for coming here and checking out our project. With your support, we'll be able to make Animal Kingdom a reality, and this is just the beginning of what we've got planned. We can't wait to show you what else is coming. By the end of this video, you'll be ready to dive right in and start playing. Animal Kingdom TCG is a city-building card game where you become the mayor of a fantastical city. Alongside your trusty assistant mayor, you'll aim to gain renown and create the most reputable settlement in all the land. Natasha! Fancy seeing you here! You're learning to play too? Hmm. <laughs> Tomoe. No, I'm here to do the teaching. Huh. Alright. How do I set up the game then? I was getting to that, Fennec. To start the game, each mayor takes their assistant mayor and a basic building from their expansion deck and puts them in play face down. Then everyone shuffles their decks and draws a hand of seven cards from their expansion deck. No way! My hand isn't very good. In that case, you can take a mulligan, return any number of cards to the expansion deck, shuffle, and draw the same number of cards. You should aim to have at least two buildings in your hand. Okay, ready to go! Uh... But what's the aim of the game? Like any leader worth their salt, you must guide your people and your city to prosperity. That means reaching 50 points of renown before your rival mayors can do the same. Ha! Simple! This'll be a cinch! Once turn order has been decided and everyone is ready, flip over your assistant mayors and basic buildings, and the game begins. Let's start with the upkeep phase. Flip over a quest so that you have an active quest, and then generate Sola according to the buildings you have in play. To begin with, that'll be two Sola. The mayor going first skips the draw phase, which takes us to the city phase. 
The city phase is where a mayor can take actions related to their city, such as playing workers, buildings, and stratagems, or utilizing the effects of cards already in play. Let's start with buildings! Uh, what do they actually do? Buildings generate sola each turn, which can be spent to play other cards. Almost all cards require a sola cost to be paid. There are also advanced buildings, which provide valuable utility in exchange for generating less sola. I'll play all of my buildings then. I have tons of them in my hand. Stop, Tomoe. You can only play one building per turn. A great city isn't built in a day. Aww. Buildings, along with workers, stratagems, and some other card types are found here, the expansion deck. Workers are the lifeblood of your city. All workers have a sola cost that must be paid to play them, a gain or penalty value, and many also have an effect. Seems simple enough. At first glance, perhaps. Firstly, a worker can be exerted to earn renown equal to its gain value. Many workers also have to exert themselves to activate their effect. Additionally, workers must be exerted in order to toil, which activates the effects of certain buildings. Take the advanced building Seer's Tent, for example. The cost to activate its effect is toil one, so one worker must be exerted to activate the effect. The building is also exerted when toiling for its effect. And since most cards can only be exerted once per turn, that means I have to think carefully about how I want to use my workers. I could just exert them to earn renown, but there may be other options available. An astute observation. Ugh, that's complicated. My brain hurts. Effective use of workers is what separates a good mayor from a great one. A similar thing could be said about stratagems. Stratagems have an immediate impact when played and are capable of achieving a wide range of effects, from drawing extra cards to getting rid of other mayor's cards. Hey, that's me! I'm whooping that guy! Uh, but if stratagems don't stick around, where do they go? After they're played, stratagems go straight to your recycling. The same goes for other card types when they leave play. Recycling? When your expansion deck is empty and you draw a card from it, all cards in your recycling, other than adventurers, are shuffled to form a new expansion deck, and you then lose half of your total renown. Oh, the name makes sense. But you keep mentioning adventurers, and I don't have any of those in my hand. Right. Let's cover adventurers. As well as an expansion deck, you also have an adventurer deck. This deck only contains one type of card. Adventurers? Smart one, aren't you? Thanks for noticing. A mayor can choose to draw one card from their adventurer deck per turn. This is called scouting. When you pay the adventurer's sola cost, it enters a special area of your city called the tavern. The act of playing an adventurer from your hand is called recruiting. Whoa! They're so cool and heroic! I want to recruit tons of adventurers and... Hold it, Tomoe. Do I need to lecture you about the hazards of overcrowding? Your tavern can only hold five adventurers by default. <laughs> Fine. I wouldn't want to stay cooped up in a tavern for long anyway. There are monsters to slay and fair maidens to save. Speaking of adventurers, what are those colorful orbs they have? And how does questing actually work? Every mayor has a quest deck. During their upkeep phase, they take the top card of their quest deck and place it face up as their active quest. From that point on, until the quest is either completed and turned face down, or replaced by a new quest in the following turn, the quest is fair game for any mayor to try and complete during their quest phase, which follows the city phase. With all the quests laid out like that, it sort of looks like a quest board that you'd see at a tavern. Quests are a primary source of renown. After all, a city that equips and hosts adventurers who are tackling the realm's problems is going to be looked upon favorably. Quests range from rescuing cats to slaying legendary dragons, reflected by their difficulty. Easy, medium, or hard. The rewards they offer scale appropriately. Okay, okay, but how do I actually do a quest? Clearly, nobody ever taught you any patience. I'm getting there. See this quest, Slip and Slide? It requires two of any statistic to complete. All adventurers have statistics, represented by those colorful orbs, as you call them. The red orb is strength, the blue orb is magic, and the green orb is guile. If you have difficulty seeing color, you can also check the text underneath. Oh, I get it! 
My Scar Sworn Mentor has two strength. That means he'd be able to complete Slip and Slide on his own. Your doom has come, Slimes. Nothing personal. <sighs> Against all odds, it seems you've grasped the basics. You could also use Magic or Guile to complete the quest, since it asks for any statistic. Some quests may ask for a particular statistic, or have additional completion requirements. Five Renown is mine for the taking! Soon enough, I'll be a true hero and... Uh, not so fast, Fennec. Huh? It's true that you'd gain Five Renown by completing the quest, but I'm afraid you haven't learned all that there is to know. Time for a harsh lesson. I can test your party with my own. Uh, what? What does that mean? When you form a party and declare your quest, other mayors can contest you. Word spreads quickly of threats that need to be dealt with, so multiple parties may butt heads in pursuit of glory. See how my party has four magic compared to your party's two strength? Since the quest asks for any statistic, I choose to complete it using magic. And because I complete the quest by a larger margin... Natasha, don't say what I think you're gonna say! I'm the one who completes the quest. No! The people were going to sing my praises! I gain five renown, and your adventurer is retired, since they failed the quest. For shame, Tomoe. Uh, heroes always bounce back, you know. Besides, don't your adventurers retire too? When a party completes a quest, they return to the tavern exerted. When a contesting party completes a quest, the mayor controlling that party also has to choose one of the adventurers to retire. Uh, well, what happens after the quest phase? There's another city phase identical to the first. After that, it's the end phase, and then the next mayor in the turn order becomes the active mayor, and so on. The game continues this way, with mayors taking turns bolstering their city, hiring workers, recruiting adventurers, and interfering with one another's plans. The first to 50 renown wins the game, becoming the greatest city in all the land, a bastion of safety amidst an increasingly dangerous world. Uh... Speak your mind. Well, I have a few things I'm still not sure about. When do my cards become, uh, unexerted? Refreshed is the word you're looking for. Your cards stop being exerted and become refreshed during your upkeep phase. A refreshed card can be exerted again. Okay, and what if I never draw any buildings from my expansion deck? I won't have any Sola! It wouldn't be ideal. However, there is a solution. Any card in your hand can be revealed to the other mayors, and then played face down as a basic building that generates one Sola per turn. This is referred to as a slum. Last question. My workers and adventurers, can they be exerted as soon as I play them? Ah, oh, surprisingly good question, Fennec. Stupid smart princess. What was that? Nothing. No, they can't. Unless a card has the quick keyword, you can't exert it on the turn it comes into play. An exception to this is buildings, which can be toiled immediately, provided you have the eligible workers. But again, those workers would have to have been played on a previous turn, or have the quick keyword. Okay, got it. Me and Fee are gonna make our city the best in the land! If you or your Firestarter spirit have any other burning questions, you should consult the Quick Start Rules Guide. Did you just... make a joke? Uh, no. Now, use what you've learned, and let's play for real. Prepare to be left in the dust, Tomoe. We'll see about that, Natasha. Let's go! There you go, guys. That is the Animal Kingdom trading card game. So before you back the Kickstarter products, make sure that you have to know more about the creator, the community, and also the artwork, artist. If everything is okay, then you go back it. And if you like the artwork itself, then you just buy it and collect it. All right, so that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.